look forward to it all of the time. <clears throat> and um, uh, we've got some very, very special guests for you this morning. Now, I've got, I've got some of our partners here. We're going to bring up on stage in a moment. Many of, many of them you already know, but we're going to bring them up on stage. Um, <clears throat> and we, we thank God for that, uh, having these guys along with us. Um, we've got, let me see, we've got Brother Corey Bishop, Refresh Clothing. And um, he is, is often known as the mayor of... <laughs> Five Points West, and so uh, we're, we're so glad to have him with us this morning. I am reaching over to him, and there he is, Brother Corey Bishop. You have been promoted. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are excited to have you here with us, and right, and there he is. He is. He he has. He gets the wonderful opportunity of being able to spend mornings with his daughter and taking her to where she needs to go to school. I wish I would have had that opportunity. I guess I had the opportunity. I guess guys like me coming up in corporate early on, we didn't see just how great the value was in really doing that. But so glad to have you with us. And then we've got also with us. Uh, man, I'm excited. Every time I can get with this guy, I'm excited about it. Uh, Mr. Jeremy Duckworth, and he is the executive director of the Central Alabama Redevelopment Alliance and the Western Community Redevelopment Alliance. And so that's kind of exciting. Ms. Duckworth, how you doing, sir? Good morning. Good morning. How are y'all doing? We're doing great, doing great. I know you've got a special guest with you this morning. It's going to be with us in just a couple of minutes. Uh, who is that? This is Samuel Kelly. Sam, say what's up? Hey, good morning, everybody. So we're excited to have you with us. Uh, anything new going on with the Central Alabama Redevelopment Alliance? So we got some pretty cool things happening right now. Uh, we got some business improvement teams going out in the field, helping small business owners in Western Birmingham and really across the Central Alabama footprint that we've established. And so we're super excited about that. And so thankful for our new partnership with Birmingham Southern College as well. Wow, that's, that's really exciting, that partnership. And, and this, this is exciting because one of the things we wanted to do when we first started partnering a couple years ago, maybe three years ago, one of the things that we talked about was that we would um, not only have workshops and seminars or sit, you know, or a few of us come together and have some snacks and drinks at lunch, but that we would actually do real work, that we would do real work, help businesses thrive and grow, and then put teams out in the field to come alongside of them. And how has that been going? Have you been successful in that effort? We've been immensely successful, but I got to say it's really a team effort. And I got to give a shout out to my brother here, Samuel Kelly as well, Corey Bishop. Samuel Kelly was the gentleman that helped uh, Pamela Dobbins uh, delightful treats and cookies with their loan they just received for the cookie machine. And so it's been a complete team effort with Sabre, Five Points West Chamber of Commerce, Fairfield Business Alliance, Midfield Chamber of Commerce, Birmingham Southern College, University of Alabama, Auburn University. I'm gonna leave somebody out and I apologize about that, but it's been a true team effort and I'm just thankful for that. You know, while you're talking about that, I, wait a minute, I, well, whose side are you on, man? I mean, you know, uh, you know, we're the we're the Five Points West Chamber of Commerce, and you're naming all of these chambers of commerce. What's happening? What, what's so, going on with that? So I would always tell people this right here. The reason why we we function like that is because we always want to strengthen that local advocacy group, right? That local group that's going to be for the small business community because we can't do it, and the Five Points West Chamber of Commerce can't cover midfield. Right. And That's so right. We always want those midfield business owners doing those local chambers of commerce to support their local ecosystem. Right. Because it strengthens it from the inside versus going from the outside and trying to strengthen it. We go, we go inside and make it stronger from that point of view. And so thankful to all the partners. Uh, we're so we're so blessed to have you guys part of the Five Points West Chamber meeting. And we're looking forward to this. Well, Jeremy, we're, we're so appreciative of having you guys with us as well. We've got some, some great lineup. Uh, Brother Corey, uh, Bishop, if you would, uh, would you uh, greet, uh, greet the audience this morning? 
Good morning, everybody. How you doing this morning? We are, uh, we're just, again, going to school this morning, so I'll be off and on the video portion of it, but I am all ears. Uh, great for, uh, for Jeremy and Frank and Sabre as well. Congratulations to you guys for helping out Mr. Pamela. Ms. Pamela still ain't got me those cookies yet, but we'll, there's something we'll talk about later on. So she's supposed to be working on strawberry, uh, excuse me, uh, oatmeal raisin balls. So if y'all can coerce her into go ahead and getting those bars in, you know, that'd be a great thing for me. Yeah, I, I like I like that, brother Corey. Let's let's keep the main thing the main thing, right? You know, right. and that that's one that's that's business one hundred and one, right? And so we're excited about that. Everything matters; it all counts, and we can never forget that. You know, it all matters. So yeah, we're excited. It's it's great to go to grand opening. It's great to see new businesses opening up. It's great to drive along Five Points West. Um, um, into the five points west of Birmingham and see the roadways, the infrastructure being improved. And uh, it's, you know, and having the conversations with the Woodfin administration, Mayor Woodfin, his team, and the work that they're going to do. And Brother Corey, you've seen some things happening with the infrastructure in the Western Business District. And if you would, would you share just a little bit about what, uh, what's been going on, improvements you've seen infrastructure wise? Sure. Uh, infrastructure has been coming along just great. We have new sidewalks placed in on US 11. Uh, also, a pavement project for the roads that haven't been paved in years over there. And they have one other project they're going to do. They're going to finish painting the, uh, the turn signal lanes, I think, coming up this week after the rain passes by. We have uh, Hibbs just put up a billboard on the side of Comfort Inn Hotel welcoming the world for the world games. And they have about three more billboards that they're working on right now. And this will all come in maybe next week after the rain has passed. So, and the way it's growing, uh, it's going to be a, a whole lot more welcoming to, to not only the world, but the, the Westerners that has been there for a long time. So that change that they have been expecting is coming about. And it's, it's a joy sight just to see and be a part of. Well, I mean, I'm 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 really excited about it, um, and 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 really really glad. Part of that, uh, the infrastructure is so important. But what's also important is that we have the services that we need. And I, I want to do, and I want to show you all something. I don't know if you've seen these, but there's a series of videos that are going on, and I want to share this one with you. And um, if uh, if you would, let's see, BJCTA doing a. A black history. I rode the bus. They had to sign a color white. And, and, and the black people had three rows back there. And, they, and this section here would be totally empty. And you, and you had to stand back there, regardless, even though it, they were empty seats. So every morning I'd move the sign. Got put in jail a couple of times, but I still would move the sign. And if I had to get on the bus and they had a sign up there, I'd move it today. So, so public transportation is, is, is needed. My name is Jesse Lewis and I ride with pride. Wow. What, 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 an, what an amazing, um, uh, a video. Dr. Jesse Lewis is a businessman, an entrepreneur, and and I, I like the fact that public transportation is saying, "Look, in 2021, 2022, we know what's happening. Uh, transportation is going to be important. Birmingham is going to continue to grow, and there are some great projects that are happening in Birmingham, and especially in the Western District of Birmingham. There are some great projects that are there, and and so this morning." We've got a couple of representatives from the BJCTA, and we have its board chair, Mr. Ted Smith. And, and I tell you what, I'm excited about having uh, the leadership of, of the Birmingham Transit with us because this is the first time that really that I can remember that it's a business approach and it's a customer focused approach to where the leadership of the Birmingham Transit is saying, look, Birmingham, Birmingham region, we want to be your public 
transportation option. And we're willing to become and do what we need to do in order for that to happen. And so we're glad to have with us uh, Mr. Ted Smith. Uh, Ms. Smith, how are you, sir? I'm doing very well today. Well, we're so glad to have you with us. And, and I know that you've got, a, you've got a lot that's going on this morning, but man, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to be able to, to jump on the, the, uh, the podcast this morning. And just, you know, um, I, gotta, I gotta say, let me let you give your plug. That's an amazing set of um, videos that you have put out regarding Black History Month. And uh, where did that come from? What was that idea behind that? Um, I'm going to defer to Miss Shaw on some of it, but um, we had some in-house people that wanted to make a design, and yes. uh, we contracted them, and they made that that book look like um, that wrap that you see right there, which was amazing for uh, Black History Month. Well, it was amazing, and I, I tell you, I was wondering. I was like, okay, now where are you know where are we? And, and, and so it was, um, it was one of those things when, when you looked at, you said, wow, is that Birmingham? It was done with such a spirit of excellence. And, you know, uh, one, we, we are very, very proud to see it. I just want to encourage, I just want to encourage those that have not seen it to take the opportunity to go on. Um, you can find it on YouTube and the like, and probably BJCTA website. And um, uh, who do you have with you today, Ms. Smith? Uh, I have uh, the CEO, Mrs. Shaw. Mrs. Charlotte Shaw. I tell you what, um, you know what? I, it, I can't tell you last time I saw a CEO of, of transportation, BJCTA, walking downtown Birmingham, right? And talking with people and interacting. Now, look, I'm just going to tell you, uh, Ms. Smith, um, you know, that made me feel like we're all connected in this thing called Birmingham in bringing it all together. And so uh, in, in, in my mind, my daughter met Miss Shaw and, and, and Miss Smith, we love you, but my daughter said that Miss Shaw is like a superstar, okay? And, <laughs> um, and so uh, Charlotte Shaw, welcome. You've been in Birmingham a while, but we're so glad to have you and thank you for your presence in the community. And, and so uh, Miss Shaw, if you would tell us a little bit about what's going on with the agency um, I know we don't have long, but there are a couple things we want, just an update and, and uh, also about the BRT, but we wanted to hear your voice, Ms. Shaw. So welcome. Is she on? Uh, let me see. Uh, I tell you what, not, okay, not yet. So, um, so will, it is, I'll, go ahead. I will get on, go ahead. Yep. And so, yeah, so we're excited about it. So where we are now, we looked at the BRT. The BRT has a deadline of being finished before the World Games, they are on track. And, and the thing that we want to know about is, and, and Ms. Smith, are we on track with the BRT? Is it happening? Uh, yes, the BRT is happening. Uh, I think uh, everybody can see uh, the progress on the West Terminus. It should be finished in about a month or two. Um, well, we're, we're excited about that. And I'm sure there'll be a grand opening. Our goal uh, will be to partner with uh, the Five Points West Community Alliance that has, that partners with neighborhoods, citizens, schools, businesses, nonprofits, churches. We're gonna have the whole team on the field because this is such an important uh, piece for us all as a community. And I know you all are excited about it. And yeah. um, go ahead. Yes. You know, we're doing some, we're doing some development around the um, new hub that's going to be in uh, West Birmingham over the cross from the Crossplex. Yes. Uh, we're looking at um, doing a, a crosswalk and um, rebuilding the building that's behind our, our facility. And then, uh, and then on the west side where we got Woodlawn, we're going to have another terminal and we're going to build uh, a debris develop around it. Um, so that is part of our strategy is that we want to make sure that we, what we call transportation orientated developments, and we want to make sure that our line is covered where we start putting in, uh, affordable housing and other businesses that would help, uh, pay for transit. 
uh, that's one of our goals. Well, we're excited about that. For those of you that don't know, that line stretches from um, the Five Points West community. Um, uh, they, there's a hub that's there, and then there's a hub going through downtown Birmingham, the intermodal, and then going up First Avenue North to Woodlawn, where there's redevelopment going on there. That means that we would be able to get on uh, a bus in West Birmingham and end up in North Birmingham. I mean, excuse me, yeah, um, what is that, Woodlawn area? Yeah. Right, so, and, it, and it will be an expedited time. So this isn't just your regular bus ride, correct? Right, the, the federal government um, requires us to, in peak time, to have that uh, route run every 15 minutes and then off peak uh, every 30 minutes. So we're, we're trying to make sure that we at least cover those hours, I mean, those times uh, on the route. That's going to change the routes and, and, you know, the times that Birmingham runs. It's also going to change our system because our system right now is what we call a spoke system where yeah. we our routes out of the intermodal. That won't happen anymore. We'll be able to run out of uh, Woodlawn and out of uh, uh, West uh, Terminus. So routes going to Bessemer would stop at the Crossplex and then they would have to transfer and come back into the city on a, on a, on a faster route. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make sure that the system runs as efficiently as possible. Um, we're also putting in involved uh, some microtransit. And uh, I explain microtransit as smaller vehicles that would transport people from place to place um, and not have a route, okay? So people can call in and then have their, um, their ride uh, brought out to the intermodal or to one of our hubs. So we're, we're trying to improve transit because I think Mayor Bell, when he was in office, he said he hadn't seen the routes change in 30 or 40 years, okay? Right. It's about to be a big infusion of change. That's all I can tell you. Wow. Well, I tell you what, we're, we're, excited, we're excited about that. One of the things I cannot wait for is just the opportunity to, to ride it myself. Not only is our nonprofit located in, in uh, the Five Points West community, we were intentional about being there and being a part of that community and doing workforce development and other things and helping families. Um, I also live there as well. And so uh, it's, uh, every day, just about, I'm riding from West Birmingham into uh, downtown Birmingham. And so I've, I'm planning on being one of the early riders. And, and if, uh, you know, if that bus is running every 15 minutes, that's going to be exciting. It should not take long to get from five points west of downtown on that bus. Right, right. And so I think, I think that route is going to help a, a, a large segment of a population. Yes. Uh, and now we got to concentrate on getting all, all the rest of our routes down to at least 30 minutes. Um, that's what we're, we're, we're working on is trying to get those routes down to at least 30 minutes so that it uh, helps citizens get back and forth to doctor's appointments, work and things like that. And if they miss a bus, they don't have a lot of a long time to wait for another one. Um, if we can do better than that, we will. But, you know, that's funding that's, that, uh, you know, helps that out. And our state does not fund transit. So we have to um, push to see um, everybody come in as actors. Well, I tell you what, one of the things that I really like is the fact that you're thinking about it from a business perspective. Uh, I was talking with some business leaders the other day, and one of the things that, that we talked about was that um, uh, the public transportation, BJCTA, has moved out of the nonprofit kind of mindset into, into a becoming a part, a vital part of the infrastructure of the business world and the community. And so... Uh, that, what did you call it, transit-oriented development? Yeah, transit-oriented development. Now, we, you know, because, you know, you're in a big, large group, uh, APTA, we go to um, different conferences, and uh, one conference I went to was in New York, and they took me through Grand Central Station, and they showed me um, all of the things that they were doing at Grand Central Station, and I was, I was amazed at how much money they pull out of Grand Central Station for train um that that kind of pushed me to over the edge i guess you could say that i know that birmingham has to has to offset some of its costs 
with other actions. So that's what we're trying to do. I think Ms. Shaw's on the line too. Uh, uh, she is. In fact, uh, let me let me invite her up as a panelist. Um, this is, and um, just, and I know you all are on a short schedule, but certainly I wanted to introduce her. Um, my 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 daughter, my family. We've been we we've loved uh, meeting her. And we said earlier today, when you're walking downtown, you talk about having a chief executive officer that's just going to stop. She, I don't even know. She, she may have remembered, but she, it didn't matter. That was just her. And my daughter's like, "Wow, she's a superstar," you know. And, and you know, and I'm like, I, I'm like, I'm thinking now. I'm not hating, but I'm saying I'm pretty cool too, right? Okay, you know what I'm saying. But hey, Miss Shaw, was so glad to see you this morning. We're glad to see you again too. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> How are you? Hey, we are well. We, I just, I, we wanted people to meet you, the team. We've met, Absolutely. you know, they had a chance to meet Ted. But when you talk about executive leaders with proven experience that are coming into the Birmingham marketplace, that makes the whole region stronger. Absolutely. You know, and we want to, and you know, when you have good leadership, you want to get behind it and follow that leadership. And so uh, we wanted to hear um, just uh, how you see transit, uh, how it's coming uh, along and, and what's on the table right now. Oh, well, thank you so much. Uh, and it is great to see you again. And I appreciate this opportunity to talk with everyone. And we have some great things planned. I am so passionate about transit and I am so happy about the opportunity to lead BJCTA into the future because with the infrastructure bill just passing, we have great opportunity to expand our services, to make them more efficient, to expand our modes of transportation. Actually, our, for the next five years, we're developing a long-term vision. It's called Transit on the Grow. And that's gonna include our uh, new BRT program that's gonna come into um, uh, revenue in June, right before the World Games. They have finished, are, are finishing, uh, I don't know if you all seen the West uh, Transit Station at the Crossplex over there at, uh, what is that, Five Points West? I'm still learning my, uh, right. uh, uh, areas in Birmingham, but right. uh, I tell you that facility. If you haven't had a chance to view it, go by and see it. It's beautiful. The buses are beautiful. The platforms are up. Uh, just about most of them. We're still working on the platforms on the east. Most of the ones on the west are done. Uh, most of the ones in ITP are completing now. So it looks like we're going to finish on time. Uh, we're going to be introducing new modes of transportation like micro transit, where we supplement our fixed route services to, so we can be on time uh, in some areas a lot better. We're going to increase our frequency and our new bus network service that we're going to be doing uh, toward June. Uh, some of our networks been working for the last 10 years, 10 and 15 years, the same ones. We haven't changed them. And so to change, we have to do things differently and to be better uh, of a service to the city of Birmingham and the surrounding municipalities, we have to do things differently. So we're looking forward uh, to our new, uh, new uh, our chair Smith talked about transit, uh, uh, our transit oriented development. We got two buildings that we're getting with the transit stations and we're gonna be looking at mixed use housing, possibly a grocery store. And so we have a lot of things planned uh, for our surrounding areas to help increase uh, areas that have been left out of the economic development plan. That's not our plan to do that. We're going to include them and make sure that they have the necessary services around all of our bus stops, our transit systems to ensure equity among the people in our community so we can help rebuild our communities. Well, we're, we're so excited. We want to know too, as a, as a community, as business leaders, how we can be a part of supporting Absolutely. it. Absolutely. One of the things that I, I you know, I've I made a commitment to do, I'm going, when, when we open, when we do that ground cutting, I'm going to ride in from the West. Oh, uh, awesome. My office is downtown. And so I'm excited about that. I can't wait to be on there. And yeah. I'm going to make sure I have some people that join me as well. Well, I tell you what, when we do the opening, I'm going to make sure that you're on there. You and your crew with me. And we're going right. to ride it together. We're going to cut that ribbon and we all going to ride it together. <laughs> well, that'd be great. We'll get with our partners in the Five Points West area, Starbucks, and we'll bring the jug of Starbucks along for the ride as well. Awesome. Um, I love it. <laughs> yep. Yep. So one, I, I know that you all have a full morning, but I wanted, I wanted people to know that live in the Western district of Birmingham, that's west of I-65. 
Most people don't know that Birmingham runs from east to west. It's mm -hmm. along the mountain. And so the BRT is running from east to west with right. an opportunity to serve the majority of the citizens that live in, in Birmingham, Alabama. Five Points West is the most popu heavily populated area in the state of Alabama. It is, it and is. So we're excited about that and having that. Yeah, we're, we look forward to serving uh, the area. And if there are anything, you know, that you all think that we can do better or some services that you'd like to see differently, you know, don't hesitate to give us a call. We'll get you some information on a customer service number who's taking that information for us now as we rebuild our bus uh, network and our different routes. And so we want to hear from you all, too, on how we're doing and what we can do better. You know, often we get a lot of negative feedback, but constructive criticism works for me. And I love the opportunity to receive that kind of feedback so that we can help make the services better. Well, I'm glad you said that Brother Corey Bishop is uh, uh, Corey Bishop is a, a, a business leader, has a business in the Five Points West Shopping District. And he noticed something about your service over in that area. OK, is that right, Brother Bishop, go ahead. It definitely have. How you guys doing this morning? Doing OK, hey, Brother Bishop. I'm doing wonderful. And you um, so great. You, you, you struck me with something in interesting. The micro services, were they like a mega Uber situation? I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. Um, I'm having uh, yeah, can you yeah. There was an echo in your in yes. your uh, your transmission. I know, I know, he's doing shuttle, but I, I tell you what, one of the things that he talked about was in the Five Points West Shopping Center that the bus is now going into the shopping center, which is bringing businesses directly, I mean, bringing uh, riders directly into the business district. Mm -hmm. And I want, wanted to give you feedback on that because he said that that was such a help for the businesses. You didn't okay. announce it or anything like that. You all just did it. Hmm. And we appreciated that. Is that right, Brother uh, Bishop? Brother Corey, can you hear me? Am I better now? Yeah, yes. I was talking about the bus coming into the shopping center. Oh, yes, yes. Um, back in the day, the bus used to take a route directly through the shopping center and drop people off right at the end, at the end entry, where the beginning entry. And now I, I noticed the other day they start back doing that again. And like Frank said, it's a great help for us because now our pages are dropped off right at the entrance and picked up at the entrance. So it's very convenient for them and their bags. So one, I want to say thank you for bringing that back. And two, what you guys both said was about the many shuttles that you guys will have. So it sounds like kind of like a max bus Uber type of situation where we can call in, patrons can call in and say, hey, can you pick me up from here? Is that what I'm hearing you saying? You know, and, and that's that's a very good question because, and that's what we, we're going to have to, sh you know, uh, uh, teach our community what we mean by microtransit. And microtransit is a little bit different than shared ride. And so shared ride is more like Uber and Link, I mean, Uber and Lyft. And those will pick you up, you know, you give them a call, they'll pick you up your front door. Microtransit is more like you, you walk, you, we work in a certain zone. And so in that zone, we may not pick you up at your front door, but it wouldn't be far. It'd be a couple blocks away, or we may have a microtransit station where in between some of our fixed routes, we have a smaller station that we will pick people up from and then take them to uh, destinations, uh, you know, predestined destinations. And so it's not really like Uber and live very similar in that we just don't pick people up from the home unless it's paratransit. Now, our paratransit, who works with our ADA clients and our fit and our challenge challenge, some you know some type of challenge uh, client, we pick them up from their directly from their homes. But now we are looking at on demand services more like via what the city is currently doing as well, and that may that may pick you up very close to home too. So while we don't do door to door service, we we more of a half mile. Uh, and a uh, you know half mile uh, type of uh, supplemental uh, bus service where we will get you very close uh, to home and to your destination. Okay, okay. And but, then, but, go ahead. One thing. So it was great that you mentioned about the people who have uh, issues because I noticed that the max bus on the first and third of the month, uh, there's a lot of people with disabilities come in on the max bus into the shopping center, and I was wondering how did that service work, but you did a great job explaining it to me just then. 
Okay. All righty. Well, and if you all and if you all have any additional questions after the day, uh, I'm going to get you. Frank, is there is there a number I can reach you at so that um, I there can he is. You there okay. he is. Mr. Smith, Ms. Smith has it. And um, OK. And, and again, we want to give full support oh, because appreciate we appreciate that. the efforts when someone wants to invest in your community then the community has to be intentional about investing in that entity as well. Absolutely. So, so for the first time, I'm going to say this. We welcome Max as a business of the Five Points West community. I so appreciate we, that. So right. we thank you for that. And, um, and of course, hey, look, we'll be, our, our, our investors group will be reaching out to you to be a part Please of that. Do. You know? Please do. Please do. And, and uh, so we welcome you. Uh, Ms. Smith, Ms. Shaw, thank you all for your time thank this you. morning. We appreciate you, and we don't thank take you so much. Advantage. All thank right, you'll you so have much. a great day. Appreciate Alrighty. it. All right, bye bye. Care. All right. How how exciting that is to have partners that um that are that are part of what we are doing, and and you know one of the things that I like um, that um, Mayor Woodfin has done that is very, very important for businesses and for the community. He's been intentional about his people, uh, his uh, administration being available and accessible. If you go down to City Hall, the customer service um, is nothing like what I've seen in my time in Birmingham, Alabama. And, and so it's amazing. But we've also had the opportunities. He's made his people available for us. And so we are very, very excited this morning to have the Director of Economic Development, Mr. Cornell Wesley, to be able to join us. And, and so uh, I'm inviting him up now as a, a panelist. He is on. And, and we're, uh, Ms. Wesley, so glad can to have you, you with us today. How are you? Doing well. Can you all hear me OK? Uh, we, hear, we hear you wonderfully. We hear you wonderfully. Um, we're just so glad to have you with us. You know, every every time I'm looking around in Birmingham, I'm seeing skyscraper. I'm seeing these these uh, construction going on in downtown. Uh, not only do we have offices Five Points West, we're right on 20th Street downtown, and we're seeing change. I'm seeing the cranes that are here, the lifts that are going on, and wanted to have you come on and talk to us a little bit about just briefly what's happening in Birmingham and then what's happening in the Western area. Sorry, you froze up for a second, so I'm going to pull over so that I don't have any further technical difficulties. But what I believe you were asking about were the things that were happening in Birmingham and, and specifically to the west side. Am I correct? Yes, both of those. Yes. That's correct. OK. All yeah, right. I can hear you good. So Very go ahead and talk. Yes. Very good. So, yeah, to your point, you see a lot of cranes in the sky. Um, you, you see a lot of movement of people. Uh, and that's indicative of how the country and not just our community is viewing Birmingham. Uh, we, we legitimately have become a key player in economic development as evidenced by one of the, well, in fact, the largest corporate relocation by way of the landing. Uh, many people don't know that that was the largest one in the country over the last three years, creating over 800 plus new jobs in our community, adding 1.2 billion in new payroll. So it's a lot to be excited about in Birmingham. And there's a lot to be excited about on the West side. You had Charlotte Shaw on the call earlier. And, and so we, we, we fully wanna embrace what transportation and connectivity will yield for accessing these new jobs that are coming online. But very more specifically, as it relates to five points in the West side of town, you know, it being a food desert, the mayor has recently charged us with, uh, with solving that issue and he has equipped us with resources to do so. Um, I'm excited to say uh, that we are near, near ter coming to terms with a, with a grocer for the West side. I think the community will be extremely pleased by this. It will go inside um, the old Winn-Dixie uh, near the Five Points West and the Crossplex complex. Um, I, I won't reveal the name until the, the ink is dry, but I can tell you we are 98% there. Um, also coming is, I believe in bringing not just the entertainment that is within the Crossplex, but we're also wanting to activate Rick Wood Field. And so I'm pleased to announce that the mayor is supporting a Blues Fest for this summer 
and we will lever we will use Rick Woodfield. We will activate that space in a in, in a way we've never done before. Um, also, the Savannah Bananas has sold out. If you don't know about the Savannah Bananas um, baseball team, it is not just a baseball game. It is entertainment at best. Um, and it is going, and it is so all 8,500 tickets have sold out at Rick Wood Field. Um, so we're going to be extremely aggressive about not at, just not activating CrossFlex, but all the assets on the west side. We're solving the food desert issue, and we're going to bring more commerce to that way. So we're, we're busy. We're doing the work. And, and, and I want to thank the community for a quick trusting us with these resources. It's your taxpayer dollars. It's not mine uh, to, to, to really maximize our efforts. Well, I want, I want to tell you, we want to support the efforts, your efforts, the effort of the Woodfin administration. And so uh, the Five Points West Chamber of Commerce is we're, uh, we are a, a different type of, of economic development organization. We serve all of the businesses and we have investors that are investing in, but we want to be able to get the word out and we want to create that pipeline because we partner with the Central Alabama Redevelopment Alliances. And when new businesses come, we are there to do the ribbon cutting, to make sure the media hears about it. We want to be an extension of the growth that's happening in Birmingham. And so uh, I, you know, I, we'll, I look forward to talking with you about that soon. And, and also, uh, Brother Corey, did you have a question? Uh, uh, Corey Bishop, can you hear me? Oh yeah, I can um, hear you. Yeah, can you guys hear me? We can. Man, I'm super excited what he, what he just said about the activation of Rick Wood Field. It's been years. I think the last time Rick Wood Field has been activated was for the movie that was shot there. So Rick Wood Field has so much history. A lot of people don't know that Rick Wood Field is the only place on earth where you can say Satchel Page, Willie Mays, Babe Ruth, and Michael Jordan played on the same field. You can't get that anywhere else on earth. So with that being said, man, we have to really, really enjoy what we have in our neighborhood. And that's right here in the West. I mean, I don't know if you guys are excited about that as I am, but hey, nowhere else in the world can you say those men played at that building. And so just hearing that that's going to be activated is great for, for us. Um, also, uh, the grocery store is very exciting to hear as well, too. So thank you guys for that. And we'd like to stay uh, in the loop on the, on the grocery store as well. Yes. And, and we look forward. We, we began the Five Points West Community Alliance that brings the neighborhoods, communities, residents, um, businesses, um, schools, nonprofits, and churches together. Whatever information you have, we want to get that out. And, and um, we want to know also, I know that there are things that are happening at Legion Field as well. I know with the World Games. So this Western Sports District is moving forward. That's right. That's right. There's, there's, a, there's a lot happening. Legion Field is also, we're reimagining uses for it and not just sports. Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't know that we've had major rock bands perform at Legion Field um, and it seats 70,000 people. Why aren't we thinking creatively about how we leverage that space as well? Um, and so we're going to be aggressive, guys, you know, and, and we're going to be very creative and innovative in our approach. If we were to continue to do the things we've been doing, then we, we can't expect a different result. And that would be insanity. You know, my paraphrase and definition of it. So we're gonna be in we're gonna be innovative and, and we're gonna be aggressive. And again, thank you to the community for entrusting us with these resources to do just those things. Well, we we certainly appreciate it. We know I know that you had another appointment this morning. I just wanted to say on behalf of the business community, five points west of Birmingham and the communities um, that that are made up of our, our neighbors and our churches and our schools and our businesses and nonprofits. We want to know how for the first time to say, look, we want to partner with you. You let us know what's happening in this Western area. We'll make sure that we get the word out to the entire community. We'll make sure that we will mobilize our assets to welcome the new businesses that are coming into this area. And so I hope that today is just a beginning of an even stronger partnership between the community and the, the economic development uh, efforts of the city. 
So w without think, question, we, I, I can tell you, we committed to just that thing, the Whiffin administration. And I, I can speak on behalf of my department as well. Uh, we're working for you. And so why would we not have you uh, at the table um, in, in terms of what, look, the, the grocery store is in response to a community need, a community outcry. It wasn't a Cornell goal. And so it's incumbent upon us as a department and as, as the municipality to, to have you in the room. And, and I tell you, uh, for, for everyone who can hear me, I pledge to do just that thing. Well, we thank you for your time. And um, for, for others is we are, we're not reimagining the whole community, but we're redefining it. And there's a website that we've put up, fivepointswestcommunity.org. And when you look at that Five Points West community, you began to see what's beautiful. And a lot of people began to say, where is this place? And it is Birmingham, and it is a beautiful place. We, we have so many things here, and we thank you for your efforts. We're glad to have you on the team. We feel your energy, your excitement, and, we're, and the excitement that you have. We're ready to celebrate with you. I'm excited right now. I'm just going to tell you. I'm fired up. So we thank you for your time, and uh, thank you for the work that you're doing for our families. Thank you, guys. God bless you, and God keep you. Call me if you need me for anything. Will do. Take care now. Well, I tell you guys, it, I don't know about you, but it's been an encouraging morning, right? And, and so it is exciting, right? It is exciting to have you here. And there, there's so much that's happening, so much that's going on. Uh, you know, we want to make you aware of it. But right now, businesses... We need a couple of different things. We need to have companies that come, we need to have individuals that support the businesses to make sure that the services and goods are available to us. And so, um, and so that's very, very important, but we also, businesses also need help financially. You know, uh, where do we get the resources from? How do we make sure that, that businesses have the opportunity to pivot, right? Not, and we don't need partners that will do everything for us, but when we need that extra bit of a boost to pivot, will we have the partners that are available? And so Ms. Duckworth, Central Alabama Redevelopment Alliance, Western Community Redevelopment Alliance, uh, we're in your hands as you talk about just that. Well, thank you for the introduction. Brother Frank, we appreciate the time today. And you mentioned something earlier, right? You said, we don't need anything. We're going to get together and have wings and snacks anymore and all that good stuff and kumbaya and all that. What we need is more work, right? And I got to tell you, Samuel Kelly is doing the work and I'm so proud for him. I'm so proud of him, but also I appreciate his commitment as well to the small business community because just recently, and this was what, maybe a month ago at least, right? We just, he just closed on a loan of $20,000 with delightful treats and cookies for a cookie machine. And so hats off to you, Sammy, for working with her to get that done. Um, that's gonna completely just revolutionize her business. She's so excited about it. When the, when the cookie machine comes in, we're gonna, well, don't, she's not on this, she's not on this platform, but we're gonna invite all the business owners part of our cohort and you as well to welcome that cookie machine to the to the to her office. And so it's gonna be a fun time to celebrate her and also look at just the growth she's gonna have in her business. And so thank you so much for that. One of the things we wanna talk about is just introduce yourself really quickly. Who are you and who, who do you work for, right? Yeah, so uh, my name is Samuel Kellett. I work for Sabre Finance. Um, so our office is uh, actually just down the street here, um, 220th Street North, um, but we do work remotely. Um, but I mean, so we're a nonprofit. Um, we work with our small businesses and throughout the state, um, but we are based here in Birmingham. So um, we try to, you know, we meet, we try to meet the business owner where they are. Um, you know, thankfully, you know, when our business owners come from Jeremy and Cara and these different organizations, which um, I know Jeremy talks pretty heavily on an ecosystem and being connected to all these different resources, when you are, involved with these and you come to seek financing it makes our job a lot easier because a lot of times everything's lined up um, and a lot of it's just checking over paperwork having this conversation saying hey you've got a great idea let's try to put it to work here um, 
Yeah, yeah so um, we've got many different financing options. Um, we also have a technical assistance program um, for those um, that come to us pre-loan that maybe aren't ready for financing. And then post-loan, we're gonna stay with you um, as long as you will have us, um, that we can be able to help and provide additional resources in the community as well. One of the things I want to go over as well is you mentioned some technical assistance, right? And, I, and I, people, I think, get confused like, well, is that is that is that like competition for other organizations that do the, that do similar work? And it's like, no, there's fifty thousand small businesses in Alabama. We need maybe fifty thousand more people helping these people. And so, a lot of times, um, we got to look at it from a healthy standpoint, right? Um, why is Saber so important to the ecosystem of Alabama, and not only for the ecosystem, but why should a small business owner give you a call? Yeah, so um, just going to pivot or go back to the demand. I mean, the demand for small business assistance is, I mean, we see it every single day. Um, and there, currently, there just aren't enough resources in the state. Um, so that's why we need, there's not competition. You know, it's easy when, I, just in the traditional sense of, hey, Jeremy and I, we do the same things on different levels, so we probably shouldn't work together. That's the complete wrong mentality to have. Right. We need each other. Right. We need to be able to say, hey, I can't help this individual needing this specific thing because each business is different. Jeremy, I'll come to you and be like, hey, I've got this person. What can you guys do for them? You've got this program available. How can you help them? Um, and now I forgot what the question was. <laughs> but so, yeah, so Sabre, so I mean, so what separates us, and I have this conversation on a daily basis with small business owners, um, and what we'll start with the financing piece is that we're not in the business of just giving you money to give you money. Um, it may not be like an online lender where you can get the money in 24 to 48 hours, but also we want to make sure that the business that or the financing that we provide serves your business, that it helps you to grow your business, bring in additional revenues, create new jobs, um, and, and it's actually impactful. Um, there are a lot of nonprofits in this space um, that have the same mentality as us, but also we want to get to know you as the individual. We want to know your business. So it's a little bit more of um, rather than let me just see those books. I want to, I want to figure out how your business operates. I want to see what is going really well. Um, and then, you know, for things down the road, if you run into a roadblock or any issues, I can be like, okay, well, remember this conversation we had. And that's how our entire team operates. Um, we're a unit here at Sabre Finance. We've got three um, individuals that are solely dedicated for the business support, the business advisement, the business counseling um, that can help and just sit down and have those difficult conversations as well. No, that's, that's a, what, you, what you touched on earlier and also <laughs> and later on. That's exactly what I want you to talk about, right? Because and I can tell you're passionate about it, right? The collaboration effort, right? That is that is actually real. That if that if I have a if, I, if we got a person that's going through our program that's now got their books in a decent order, not perfect, imperfect business, but that's but that's further along now, I can now flip them to a Sammy Keller, a saver finance that can help them now get a cookie machine. And for and with the loan, it's almost like a kind of like a loan grant kind of program or whatnot that I would love to expand on in the future as well. But it helps the business owner, right? What I, what I really appreciate about Saber and also Samuel is their commitment to grow small businesses in Alabama, right? And particularly micro businesses in Alabama, right? Business businesses that have five or fewer employees, that's their main focus, right? And so. Um, which brings me to my next question. Why do you do this, right? What, what, what is the outcome that you want to see in Alabama um, by doing this work that you do? Yeah, most definitely. So um, I think for most of us that are here, we've either grown up here in the state or we've come here for a specific purpose. Um, and it's just, you know, for building our community. I mean, especially for small communities and neighborhoods like this. I mean, Birmingham is the larger city in the state, but you know each other. You know, the small business owners know each other. You have this community. So there, I mean, I can go into a lot of things. So the main piece is being able to help individuals on a one-on-one -on -one basis. But when you look at that larger picture, 
when we start dealing with business owners that have it that first off from the education standpoint haven't been able to learn about personal finance so we can take that step but then when we start looking at the business and how it can grow and create jobs we talk about generational wealth we start about community building i mean we we get into a much larger picture to where we fit into that that economic development space where it goes beyond just hey here's fifteen thousand dollars for you to get this piece of equipment we start looking 10, 20 years down the road and the effects that it makes for that business owner, for those employees and the impact that it just continues to develop, um, you know, here in the state. It's almost ongoing, right? Yeah, almost <laughs> It's exactly. like a ripple effect that hits and it just keeps on going. You know, one of the things that Mr. Woodson always talks about, and I want him to kind of touch on this if he has, if we have time to do this today, is you'll see a lot of the times the same business owners in the same programs, not all the time, but sometimes, right? But there's so many other business owners out there that we, we might call uh, C students, right? They're not always looking for all the programs and all that kind of stuff, right? Mr. Woodson, can you touch on that for a second and why partnerships are so vital as well? Yeah, one of the things, one of the things that we found is that the connectivity is, is often the issue. And so what happens if there are a lot of businesses that need that boost, but a lot of times these EDOs and other uh, nonprofits don't know who they are. And so, and so we wind up seeing the same people getting help and it's much needed help. But one of our goals is that to get everyone to participate in a chamber of commerce, a business alliance, so that the information can get to you and those businesses to be able to apply and I think that we'll begin to see the changes in, in um, the faces or having a broader impact, but also these type of relationships to where we know who these folks are in the EDOs, we are not competitors and the like, we've got to have our round tables to where we have better communication. So we're looking forward to that. And we are hoping um, that uh, just like the, what's happening today, that we get to know each other better and that our businesses can have a direct link to SABER and other entities that provide economic development. You know, that's exactly, that's exactly it right there, right? 50,000 plus small businesses in Alabama, right? We can get to them together, right? But we appreciate your time today, Samuel. Any parting thoughts you wanna give? Um, well, thank you for, for having me. I mean, the education piece, whether or not it's from an actual subject or just the information about what we do. Um, Reginald Smith, my colleague, he is always on the ground. He's always on a webinar because he knows that there are 50,000 small businesses and we get people here in the city every single day. They're like, why have I not heard of you guys? That's right. You know, um, and we try to have this collaborative effort with organizations like CAR, like the Chambers of Commerce, because we know that everything works together. The more support you have, the more kind of knowledge that you have, it's power. Um, we know that. So, I mean, that that's really is just continue to educate yourself. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, there are no bad questions um, because us at Saber, we're going to, we're just going to give it to you straight. We're going to provide resources. We're going to refer you places if we can't help you directly. Um, so yeah, just thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome. Appreciate your time, man. Thank you guys. Hey, so we, we are back. We, uh, the, the more we know each other, the better we work together. We're excited about, um, to have with us, um, uh, representative of uh, Birmingham Police Department. And so, Brother Corey, Thank if you would, we know that there have been changes was under, thanks and for that are going on in our, in our, city, of in our city and uh, with our police chief and the like. But we have uh, the Western District of Birmingham has its own police precinct. And we're excited about that. So, Brother Corey, if you would, can you tell us a little bit about that and introduce our special guest? Yes, sir. So we do have a, a police precinct in the western area of Birmingham. It's right behind the shopping center. And the best the best part about that, we have a liaison, which is Miss Felicia. Miss Felicia is the, has done a great job for many, many years keeping us informed about the new things that are happening within the police department, uh, statistics, uh, safety tips to making sure that the business community is safe to have the business hours, and also the community. She has information on 
if you need uh, if you need help with specific things, she's great with finding out those specific information. And also, if you need help on um, on small or big things, Miss Felicia has been there to to just push us forward, give us the information that we need, keep us abreast of what the police department is doing. And there she is, right there. It's a beautiful picture. Hey, Miss Felicia, how you doing? It's great to see you today. Thank you, Corey, for that introduction. And yes, of course, Birmingham does have positions of liaison positions. So we have the four precincts and each of our precincts, we have a person in place that work as I do for uh, the Western area. And our positions basically came out of the, the civil rights struggle because a lot of people uh, will say that Birmingham don't have the problems that a lot of other cities have. Uh, dealing with the, the problems between police and community. But what a lot of people don't know is that we've been addressing that community police partnership ever since the early 70s. So we're able to squash a lot of incidents that escalate in other areas because we have that connection with our community. And I am just so grateful for over the last 30 years, I've had the opportunity to be that conduit to help build that positive relationship between the police and community. And uh, I know that most of you realize we have gone through a lot of transition in the last um, month or so. And actually at our Western Precinct, we've been transitioning since I guess back in October of last year because our captain then, Captain Angela Doyle, she retired. And then we uh, received Captain uh, Theophilus Smith who shortly retired after he came over. Then we received again, Captain Thurman, who was removed when Andrew Doyle came over. And two weeks in, he was named uh, acting chief. So now we're down to another captain who is Captain Curtis Mitchell. And I say, I say to you, I'm very, I was excited to have Captain Thurman back, but I tell you, I'm just as excited to have uh, Captain Curtis Mitchell because he's an, he's a hands-on captain and, um, you know, he keeps me in the loop in terms of what they're doing on the police side so that I can get that information out to the public when I need to. And um, he's just going to be a great person in, in this position. And I hope he stays here through the duration because I plan on getting out of here very soon. And so I, I hope he's here for that duration. Yes. But um, other than the changes that we're having here with our command structure, I did want to advise the other business owners in the area about a robbery that we had. And when I initially heard about the robbery, robbery, it was with the other business alliance group. And I knew that we had this other group in place and I wanted to make sure if there were, were any uh, risk to the other business owners that you were aware. But when I looked at the report and when I talked to the victim, it looks like he was targeted. So it's not a call for any alarm to our business owners in the area, even though we do constantly encourage you to stay alert, to stay cautious, and if you feel that something is, is out of the ordinary, to give us a call at the non-emergency number. And I hope the business owners know that number is 205-328-9311. And of course, if it's a situation where crime is in progress, that's a 911 call. Now, as a liaison, I do take any concerns from residents that you may have for the police department. And please know that I get a report just like the commanding staff. You often ask, how much do I have to pay you up front to be my lawyer? The answer is nothing. It's free unless we win. I get a report every morning like the commanding staff of important occurrences. So whenever there are issues in areas that I know we have active either block watchers or business owners, I do make contact to let our residents and our business owners know that we have a problem. You need to make sure you are Thank cautious you. and aware. So I'll take any concerns that you may have back to uh, Captain Curtis Mitchell. And I'm sure you may want to invite him at some point to uh, meet with your group. And that would be, that would be awesome. Can, can we put that phone number in the chat? Because we want businesses to have it. A lot of times we know about 911 and they're very gracious to us. But um, can we get that phone, that non-emergency phone number again? Okay, that number is 
311. We are, we appreciate we appreciate that. <clears throat> okay, and, that, and if there if there is any time, I'm sorry, French, that anyone need to contact me here at the office, my number is 205-297-8353. So, so it's 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 really good to uh, to realize, especially as small businesses, that we're not just out here by ourselves, right? And that um, cities provide uh, things that are essential to business: street and sanitation, emer and emergency services, police and fire. So this partnership has to work together. She's here every day. Brother Corey's always telling me about Miss Felicia, Miss Felicia. She's here every day, but our businesses are, you know, we've got to maximize the partnerships. And that's so important. Brother Corey, that's one of the things you're always talking about, that you're staying in touch. And how, how do you do that? How do we maximize that? Like you said, the thing is to stay in touch with the resources that we have. Ms. Felicia is a great resource. We also have resources with the fire department. It's all, it's all about the conversation. We can't, we can't build what we're building without the connections around us. It's just like uh, uh, Jeremy said about the, the other infrastructure. We have to have other parts of in infrastructure in place in order for our main infrastructure to work out. And so that's why it's so important for relationships with, with people like Miss Felicia to be able to be in constant contact with her. And she's such a down to earth person that she gives you the information that you need right as you need it. It's not like a bunch of fluff or stuff like that. So. That, that's, that's one of the key things that I appreciate so much about Miss Felicia and her group. But I, I heard you say something that was kind of alarming to me. You said you're trying to leave. So before you leave, please make sure you introduce us to the next liaison, but don't go too far from leaving because I, I don't know if you guys do know this or not, but Miss Felicia is also a business owner in our area too. So we need to oh. make sure that we stay in constant contact because of that, is, that as well. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> wow. Hey, there are also resources that the police department has on the website, right? So where as a business owner, if you want to know what's going on around you, that kind of deal, there are like reports and everything that I stumbled on about a week or so ago. And, um, and that's something uh, when you get a chance, one, I'd like to know about it, and two, uh, uh, let me know so we can get it out to the people what, what information is available so that we know what's going on and we can be vigilant. So you're asking me? Yes, ma'am. So that's actually under the auspices of our PIO department. Yeah, but I can get the information for you. That's that's not from my office. Well, neat deal, neat deal. Because all that is just good information. And again, without a liaison, we would not have access to this information. And so businesses, if we have a concern, we would be able to call you. If we see a criminal element that's loitering around the business, if we're concerned about our bank, you know, what's happening around the bank and those things, we can call you, correct? Well, actually, now, if there is a call for police service, mm -hmm. there are two numbers you should dial. If it's a crime in progress, that would be 911. Okay. If it's a non-emergency, it would be the non-emergency number that you listed in the chat. Mm -hmm. My position is to deal with issues that you don't need police service. For example, okay. the, the regular beat officer does not address, let's say, a vice activity. They can deter it because they patrol through the business areas, they patrol through the neighborhoods. So you may suspect that a business is doing illegal activity. And on the residential side, it's a residence that doing illegal activity. So you would then contact me. I would try to get as much information as I can on that issue. And then I would direct it to the bureau that it needs to go. So that's how I assist. If there's an ongoing issue that the police can actually address. I will okay. help you with that issue. But if you need a service immediately, it would be to call the two numbers, one of the two Love numbers. It. So we can be proactive as a community. So that's one of the reasons for your positions uh, is that we can be proactive. 
Right. And and don't we don't have to wait till it becomes a huge problem. We have right. a liaison with the police department, and many of us don't know that. We put the numbers in the chat again for emergencies. When you need immediate service, police service and response, nine one one is the number. But as you, when you look in the chat, you will see when you see things that are a concern or that you think some some aspect of law enforcement may need to get involved, investigation or the like, then we can you can dial the number 328-9311, 328-9311. And for uh, direct contact, we have Ms. Felicia's phone number and her name is in the chat. So make sure that you take advantage of that. Look, we want to thank you for that, uh, your time this morning, and <clears throat> and uh, we look forward to having you on on a regular basis, and uh, both as a business owner and also as our liaison to the police department. So we thank you for that. Thank you, my pleasure. All right. Well, look, we uh, we we are so excited again about uh, the opportunity to have uh, representatives from our government representatives from our local government who are able to share with us <clears throat> things that we need to know. And um, we are at our time, but I will not, I will be remiss if there's a lot that's going on in Montgomery, some of, some of which uh, impacts our businesses and certainly our communities. And we wanna make sure that we um, stay abreast of what's going on there's a lot that's going on, um, and if you all would indulge me for about three to five more minutes, I think that it's worth hearing on what's happening in Montgomery. And this is one of the areas that, especially in Western Birmingham, that we want to improve upon. And our state representative um, for uh, that helps uh, represent a part of the Western area and works cooperatively with the other state reps is uh, Louise Alexander, and she's been on here before. And so, Ms. Alexander, how are you today? Uh, do you want to know, can you hear me? Can you get your mute there? I'm all great, right. how about you? I'm doing great. I know you guys have been working all, you guys have been working late nights, correct? Correct, correct. We got some crazy bills down there that uh, two of them came out of the house, yes, I mean, yesterday. Um, the no, you know, you, uh, you don't have to have a permit now to carry your weapon. Uh, so it passed concealed, out of the right? house. To carry it concealed. This, this means that people are able to, to, to just, just strap up and put it under. Correct. It, wow. And, um, that problem. bill, that bill passed out of the house, but I thank God for some of our senators that's upstairs, they're going to try to kill that bill and, um, we got a, a treadway. He used to be a police officer in Birmingham. He passed a riding bill. And it means that that bill say if five or more, five or more is gathered uh, together, they can say that you're, you're finna ride or you're finna protest. So that police officer got the right to come, stop you, tell y'all this, this, uh, dismantle, go your separate ways. And I gave them an example. I said, it's 17 of us. I said, my sisters and brothers, I said, we go places together. I saw if they drive up and see me and my family talking outside our cars before we get in them, he could say that. And the guy said, yes. He said, well, we're trying to do is stop what happened in uh, Birmingham. I said, you got to understand those individuals was, was not from Birmingham. I said, they said they was coming here to help. I said, y'all even, you know, saw it on TV. I said, uh, two other white females was finna uh, spray paint a business. And the black young lady said, no, don't do that. She said, well, we came here to help you. She said, we don't need that kind of help. I said, so you know that what y'all doing here is directly directed to us. And I told Miss Black History Month, I said, all these bills that y'all passing for the NRA and they was there, it's actually to just say, they don't have to have on their hoods anymore. Uh, you know, we're gonna let them do it to themselves. Look how many uh, shootings. I even told them about all the young, young uh, men and young ladies that just passed and they was just killed in the line of fire. Do you think they cared? No. Then they got this bathroom bill they passed. <laughs> Whatever sex you was born at, that's the bathroom you have to go in, right? Even though 
you have went through the phase of changing from a male to a female, but you was born as a male, you got to go in the male bathroom. So what you think that's going to do to that person that's already changed already, their parents that had them change over to females, their body parts. I mean, these are crazy bills and we're trying to get in touch with all our pastors and all our business. Now for the business, let me tell you this, they can come in your business with their guns, even though you, you know, now you got to have security in your shop. That's crazy. Uh, you know, one of the things I was wondering as you were talking, are businesses still able to post and say, we do not want weapons in our business? You can post it, but they, they don't have to listen to it. You have to put a security guard. That's what I'm saying. You got to <clears> get security <throat> to be at that door to say, just search them and say, hey, if you got a gun, you need to go put it in the car. This business don't, you know, allow uh, guns. And I said, that's more money added on to our businesses that they don't have to expense that they don't have to have. But let me show you how crazy this bill is. You still got to buy a permit. Uh -huh. I know you're wondering what, you, what I'm talking about. If you go out, if you drive to Atlanta, you got to have a permit for your gun. You go to Mississippi, you got to have a permit well, for your gun. You right, go because of the cooperative for these right. other 12 to 15 states. Correct. So they <clears throat> Because say, it would be know, concealed carry, right? So I drive across the Georgia line, I have this on me, it's concealed or in the car loaded. That's right. That is you gotta concealed have permit. carry. Correct. Wow. So my thing to him yesterday, I mean, yeah, yesterday and day before yesterday before it came out, I said, now, he said, well, I'm a buyer permit, the guy that carried the bill. He said, I'm going to get a permit because I go out of town all the time. I said, so you're double talking. He said, what do you mean? I said, you don't want us to have one here in the state of Alabama, but when we go to Georgia, uh, anywhere, Florida, anywhere, we got to have one. So we still got to buy a permit no matter what. I said, but you, you don't have that in your bill. He said, well, if somebody go out of town and, 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 and they stop them, you know, they'll know then they have to come back and get a permit. I said, that's dumb. But they had the votes, um, 68 to 37. We had, we had uh, Republicans to vote with us as well. So they was against it. Uh, 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 I looked at, I looked at that. There were Democrats against as well, and I think uh -huh. you have one seat that is not filled. So we're looking at this. We're looking at the policy as a business, as business owners, and now we've got to come up with new strategies as business owners to protect our businesses, like you said, be it security or, or I mean, this is, I mean, this is going to be this is going to be a challenge because that's one of the things with going to public places that I don't want to have to deal with with my family, and that is everybody going in with weapons. Also young, church. Also church now. Think about your church. Yes. You know, the young man that was killed in the mall, the young man that was killed in the Galleria Mall, he uh, was a serviceman. He had a permit, I believe. He but did. He, he pulled that weapon, and the police were not able to discern who is who. So that means that even if there is a shooting or something like that, your license carry, you're reluctant to pulling or protecting your family because mm -hmm. you then become a suspect as well. So, uh, you know, I mean, this is, yeah, it, I don't understand it. It, it. it seems, you know, I don't understand it. That's all I'm going to say. But we, look, I appreciate that. Also, what's happening with the American Rescue Act? Oh, let me tell you about that. <clears throat> We had a meeting with um, our, our Congress our woman, Terry Sewell, yesterday, and I, I got a package that I need to give you because I, I called, I called uh, four or five mayors yesterday, and we're going to meet on Monday. Yes. And we got, they, they were showing us ways that with this money, how Black businesses, churches, nonprofits can apply in this grants out there. They got one now for cities for $40 million. Well, you have to have matching money. That matching money now can come from Jefferson County Rescue Act money. Mm. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Well, and uh, pretty neat. and uh, what we really need some help on is they sent a lot of that money back uh, for paying folks house note, rent, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They didn't get they didn't get it out in time. So 
uh, Terry Sewell, Country Sewell, is trying to get that money back uh, to Birmingham or try to keep it in Birmingham. And what she said is, we need to find somebody, some other folks to help distribute that money uh, for mortgages, your house notes, your rent, if you rent from somebody, uh, anything you need this money for, like Bill Gas Bill. Why would we send almost $70 million back? That's crazy. So we got people here that need it. Well, you know, one of the things we wanted to do, and we, we talked about this, talked to Mayor Woodfin about it, we want to strengthen the nonprofit sector, right? And this, this is an amazing opportunity to strengthen the nonprofit sector. We've talked about beginning a, 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 a nonprofit accelerator to help them grow, stabilize, because they are the ones that are the boots on the ground. These NGOs, these, these faith-based organizations, they are the boots on the ground. And if case managed properly, we can get the resources to where they're needed the most. Correct. Because I'm getting phone calls every day, rent, power, all of the things for the money that's being sent back. So mm -hmm. I want to work with you any way, any way that we can. Well, um, the money is the money is gonna. Um, the, she said by Friday of this week, which is tomorrow, that money will be. You know, she's gonna make sure that money stay here in this uh, state of Alabama in Birmingham. So what she was saying is for us to get with some nonprofits. So I was going to talk to you about it. Absolutely. Uh, to go and talk to Jimmy Stevenson and uh, 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 LaShonda Scales them about letting you be uh, a person that handles that as well. Yeah, because if we, if we can do the match, you know, that would be awesome. You know what? what we well, you don't have to do matches on this. You're just going to have oh, to make don't. sure that they, uh, with this, we're trying to get rid of it. All they got to do is bring you. Uh, they just say a rental uh, agreement and a letter from just say, I'm going to say about the rental, a letter it's from the um, landlord. Yes. You know, and That's you know, you, and, you know, we work together to distribute so much food. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we did over 20 million pounds of food and, you know, we work together on that through oh, yeah. mm -hmm. entities. So we know that the community, the NGO sector has the capacity to reach these Correct. people that we're talking about, because you and I and the pastors and others, we've done it throughout the pandemic. Correct. 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 Oh my gosh. Well, look, we appreciate it. Our, our time is uh, we've gone over, but I wanted to hear from you. I know look, you all you all worked until the wee hours last night Ooh, and then you were yes. up again early this morning at 5 a.m. Correct. And so but what, we appreciate you being here as always. We look forward to the next update. OK. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, have a blessed day. All right. We'll do. Mm -hmm. hey, and, and that's it. And that's it, folks, for, for our time together. I, I know that it was meaningful. I know that it was productive. And I thank you all for being a part of the Five Points West Chamber of Commerce uh, uh, meeting this morning in our <clears throat> in our podcast. We want to strengthen businesses so that they can thrive and grow to provide more services and resources to our communities. It's a great partnership. Uh, we thank God for you. We look forward to working with you more in the future. You all have a great day. Remember, for more information on being a part of the Five Points West Chamber of Commerce, visit us on fivepointswest.com. That's fivepointswest.com. Thank you. God bless. Have a great day.